um, when I was about two and a half. Um, from a very close family, but a blended family. Um, my family was blended, so my parents were divorced before that was normal. So um, we moved to Murfreesboro to be in a little bit of a larger town. Uh, I'm one of four children, I'm the youngest, and um, Murfreesboro and Rutherford County was the right fit for us. So I've, I've lived here my entire life, and then my family's here now. Nice. Now we are a professional outfit here. We've won multiple Emmys for this program, as you know. So I am not below to do this. Can you guys see her, or is the chair too far over? Do we need to move her a little over? Is, is it the plan? Okay. That's professional right there. Do you want me to? How about that? Now the plan. I'm just going to There we go. It's called being flexible. It's called being flexible. That's right. Now, you went, what was your elementary school you went to? Uh, I went to McFadden Elementary. That's right. Oh, got a couple it, in McFadden. It, it was not a magnet school at the time. <laughs> you then attended Blackman High. No. No. Central Middle School. Central Middle School. All of the elementary schools poured in to Central Middle. So no matter where you went to elementary school, <clears throat> you went to Central Middle. Got it. And then we went to high schools from there. And then there. It was also not a magnet school. <laughs> <laughs> Your memories of Blackman High. Um, I'm going to kind of tell us about while you were here, your friends, teachers, stories, activities. Um, you're in, who are my color guard? in here today. I have color, color, a couple oh, of color guard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Been tell, there, us, done that. tell us about your time here at Blackman. Um, so at Blackman, I, uh, I was very involved. I um, had kind of a diverse set of friends uh, involved in clubs, activities, uh, academics, extracurriculars. So I was in color guard. I um, twirled a rifle and a flag. Um, yeah. Did, did that. Uh, I was in French Club. I was in Renaissance uh, when Renaissance started. I was in the Business Academy. I was in journalism. Um, a lot of advanced honors and AP classes, so very involved in school. So you were one of the first that started to decorate the outside wall. Mm -hmm. Outside of, the library, the media center? Yeah, that's right out there. She was one of the first that started um, to do that. You also, um, you had a job. I did. Where did you work? Um, I started working when I was 15 at Captain D's. It was actually a brand new Captain D's. Got a D's. couple. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they like Captain D's or work at Captain D's? That may have been... Uh, Hush Puppies? Hush, yes. Was that a pup for Hush Puppies? Yes. <laughs> so, um, you started working when you were 15. Yes. If you could go back... Would you do that again? No. <laughs> How come? Um, not because of the job, but because there's plenty of time in life to work later. So I would have preferred to have taken that time to spend with my friends, my family. Um, time is precious. We kind of take it for granted. And I think when you are in your seat specific specifically, um, you want to hurry up. You want to hurry up and get through the coursework of today. You want to hurry up and get graduation here. I mean, I'm sure there's seniors in here count down the days till graduation. But when that door closes and another one does open, um, you look back and you, and you miss the time that you had in high school or the friends. Or even though you don't think you have it, that extra time where you're not having to make all those independent decisions and be completely autonomous. Um, so I, I have a little guy who just started kindergarten this year. They don't even take naps in kindergarten anymore. Okay, you see what I'm saying? You all want to go back to kindergarten. You're all going to want to go back to your senior year of high school to some degree. Um, so I just wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't work maybe so hard. Yeah. Here's a couple of pictures. That's her seventh, or uh, sorry, 11th grade picture there. She's in, I believe, Renaissance. Yeah, I had the flu. Thanks for that picture. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to dig that up out of the yearbook. There she is with Renaissance, uh, with Miss Walker at the time. There she is with Color Guard. Journalism. And, and journalism. Is that a journalism picture? Yes, journalism. Now, 
This part is not the easy part. And I don't, you can go wherever you want to okay. with this. One of your dear friends was Ellen Dent. Yes. And um, it was a dark day here at Blackman. And I wasn't even here, but I can still see the repercussions on the day that she died. Do you feel comfortable talking about that day? Um, yes. So I was really good friends with Ellen. We were um, in color guard together. Uh, she's the reason I took French. She's the reason I was in French club. My helmet cut out. Uh -oh. No, try it. Okay. No, my mic. You can use mic. And we're going to be flexible again. Yes. Um, I don't know why it turned off. But uh, she was in color guard with me as well. Uh, we were in our uh, senior English class together. Um, we spent time together outside of school. Um, Ellen's parents, she, she was the middle of, nope, I'm at, my mic's out again. So uh, Ellen has two sisters, an older sister and a younger sister. So she was the middle. And uh, her parents, I wouldn't say they were really strict, but they were very involved. And so she wasn't allowed to drive people around, but I got to ride with Ellen. She, um, um, you know, she was driving a little bit before I was. So we were very close, spent the night at each other's houses. And um, she was a Christian, very faithful and played a huge role in a lot of my kind of center, bringing me back to center in day-to-day -day conversations and activities. If I needed advice or um, wanted a shoulder to lean on, she was there for me. And so on that particular day, um, we both had um, an early class and um, Miss Walker actually came and got me out of my early class. and. In the D hallway, there was a teacher's break room, kind of in the middle of a hallway, and just took me in there, and she just asked me to, to wait, and wouldn't tell me why. But, you know, I was an overachiever, very involved, so I was like, oh, she just wants me to do something, something for journalism, something for Renaissance, and didn't think much about it. Um, but on the way to school that morning, Ellen had a car accident, and um, on her way to our early class. And many students, as they were coming to school, were passing this accident. It was on Baker Road, and it involved a school bus as well. And Ellen's parents were also taking her younger sister to school. So they weren't, in, in 2004, um, cell phones were a thing you had to like pay minutes for, or you had free nights and weekends. And so we didn't use our cell phones the same way. Um, it cost money to have text messages and things, so they couldn't get, a, hold of her parents right away. So it took them some time to notify her mom on her house phone. And ultimately they showed up at her house to, to talk to her. And so until they were able to talk to her parents, um, although people were passing the accident, some people knew things other people didn't. And so uh, Ms. Walker had taken me in there because she didn't want me to hear part of the rumors that are going around. Because if you see a car in an accident, you don't know what's happened. Um, it was about 10 o'clock that morning we found out that it was Ellen in the accident and we found out that she had passed away. And that had a huge impact on our student body. Um, as a 17 year old at the time, it was the first time that I had lost someone in my life for no reason. Um, they weren't old, they weren't sick, they weren't doing anything wrong, they weren't partying or she was driving to school and it changed a lot of things in that, in that moment, that day, and then kind of what unfolded. Our student body um, came together. She was very involved, also had a very diverse friend set, involved at her church. Um, and I should probably say Ellen changed my life. Um, I had a full ride scholarship that I had turned down to MTSU in December of that year and um, had planned to go to a private university in East Tennessee.
that I also had um, a full ride scholarship too that I had to compete for. So I'd gone to scholarship competitions and my academics, interviews, papers, and I'd earned this scholarship and I ended up turning it down because I didn't want to move away. Um, I didn't want to leave my family. I didn't, I felt like for the first time I wasn't invincible. Um, because as a 16, 17, 18 year old, you kind of feel that way. Like what can happen today? I'm just gonna get up and go to school and go to work, come home. Um, and so it was losing someone and dealing with grief at 17 was much harder than I expected. Um, I really struggled with feeling like what was the point of several things. Um, you know, I, like I said, I was an overachiever and very involved. And so it was like, what for? If it could all just, you know, no matter how good you were. I mean, she was probably the best, nicest, most honest person. And she didn't deserve that. So uh, losing Ellen was, was hard. And grief is hard no matter how old you are. Um, I lost my mom about a year and a half ago at 59. Um, a terminal cancer, a very rare, like a one in 500,000. And then that cancer doesn't actually spread, but her spread. And we lost her and grief at 32, 33 is not any easier. And um, I think it's important to value what you have and to enjoy it because none of us get to pick when or what tomorrow brings. Now, there are a couple of areas. Oh. Oh, we're. Thank you. Thank you. There are a couple of areas in our school that you can see the impact that Ellen Dent made. If you go out to the courtyard during lunch today, and you'll see the concrete headstones, you'll see the other students and teachers who have passed away at our school. And I think some people don't really know what that is out there, and Ellen's name is on there. If you also come to the library, there's a Blackman High School history section when you first come in the doors, and there's a memorial for her there as well. So after this, you attended MTSU. You were working and going to college. What advice would you give to students about college and working at the same time? Um. So, you know, I had turned down a presidential scholarship to MTSU. So that was kind of a mistake. Once you turn that down, you don't get it back. And um, so, I was, so I was having to pay part of my way through school, which was never a plan. I'd worked really hard. Um, my parents are, uh, are not, have not ever been well off. And of four children, it was gonna be my responsibility to put myself through college. So um, I started, started working in a more, I hate to say like real job, but a job that paid a little bit better, had more consistent hours. Um, and so as I worked a full-time 40 hour a week job um, in a business setting, my schoolwork was flexed around that. So I took classes on like Mondays and Wednesdays from six to nine. I, um, I also got married shortly after high school. I got married when I was 19, or actually I think I was, 18, a week away from my birthday or something. Um, and then I had uh, my first child not long after that. And so I was in school <clears throat> at MTSU working 40 hours a week, um, purchased a home, so paying for a mortgage, it was relying on me. And then I had a little bitty baby girl um, who I was clearly taking care of. So it, it's hard, college was hard for me. Um, I was smart or intelligent, maybe I was dumb. Um, but, you know, I had had all these skills that I had kind of honed and worked for, for, for years, middle school, high school. Um, didn't go to magnet schools, they are now. But, um, you know, they, I had, I'd had worked so hard and then life was hard. Um, MTSU's a great school. It was 
uh, kind of my safety net school. And I, people say that now, they're like, oh, well, you know, I live in my Bruce Pearl, MTSU's not really where I want to go. It was a great school. Um, it is a great school, uh, provided a great education, a great basis. My degree is worth every penny I paid for. Mm. Not everyone's school or degree is. Um, if you don't know where you would want to go, I think that MTSU is a great school. Um, I'm, I'm proud to be True Blue. Um, the business program, uh, I completed the business management program and then I did an emphasis in HR management. Um, how that happened for me is I was working and I kind of worked my way into HR. Started as kind of an HR clerk, then an HR coordinator, um, all while going to school. And so as that unfolded, my coursework at school kind of altered to kind of match what I was doing. Um, originally, I thought I'd wanted to be a teacher. I had gone to governor's school for prospective teachers uh, when I was in high school. And um, I'd had that thought for a while, but business ultimately was what suited me. Nice. So HR and human resources, um, you also went into real estate, mm -hmm. and then now you're at Trust Point Hospital. I got my real estate license, but kind of between when I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do. And then uh, the real estate market tanked in 06, mm -hmm. and I didn't wanna live on commission. Uh, once again, having a steady paycheck was an important driver for me. So right. back to the office I went. So with your job, one of the things I think students struggle with is how in the world do you balance everything? You have jobs, you have six or seven classes, you have all these things going on. How in the world do you figure out priorities with, with your job? Um, so, you know, my, my job requires a lot of multitasking. I answer to a lot of people. Um, Trust Point Hospital, we opened in 2012, and so I started there with a management company when, when the building was just gravel. And they had uh, two hospitals that I was over, one in Texas and one in Tennessee. And prior to that, I'd worked in nonprofit health healthcare covering five states. And so that involved a lot of travel. Um, so to, to find balance in what I do, it's, it's always about the priority that impacts the most people. Um, so if, if one task, even if it's the hardest task, it impacts the most people, that's where I start. And then I also have to align my work priorities with my personal priorities. I have three kids and they have softball and cheer and school and homework and all of these other things. And so it's about knowing when to kind of shift your brain into that mode. So if I'm at work or if I'm at home, um, much like when you switch classes, you have to kind of dedicate, you know, when you go from first period to second period, you turn off whatever you were doing and kind of pause that for a moment and then work on what's at hand so that you give that your, your undivided attention. Um, but work-life balance is something that I think continues to evolve. Um, you have to find the pace that works for you. There's no magic sauce. You just have to mix it all up and, 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 and work it out. And it's okay to, to be flexible three microphones yes. later and That's right. the plant has to move. You know, you just, <laughs> you just have to do, if you never do something, nothing changes. So if you want something to change, um, you have to do something. So fail forward. It's not really about the goal. It's about celebrating the steps along the way. So if it's about multitasking at work or getting through high school or or moving away from good or bad relationships in your life, if you want to change, you have to, you have to just take that step. And, and it's okay to fail forward um, because you can never get there if you don't ever start. Absolutely, and you learn a lot. I think that's one of the things students struggle with is failure when you've messed up. Um, what is something that. that you have feel like maybe you failed at but you learned something from it? Is there a specific instance that you can think of? Um, yeah, I've failed a lot. <laughs> I have uh, failed papers, failed tests, failed people. I have terrible test anxiety, completely blew an ACT one time. Mm -hmm. I mean, didn't finish the test that my parents had paid for. Um, you know, take it again. Um, I have failed relationships. Um, I've, I've been divorced and remarried. Um, that was really hard for me as a perfectionist and an overachiever. Um, but sometimes you just have to do what's, what's, what's best. And, and sometimes you have to just show up. Even if you know you're not gonna do well, you have to show up and just do it. And um, 
I think failure is hard. Sometimes it's within your control and sometimes it's completely out of your control. And it's really hard to fail when it's completely out of your control. Absolutely. How many of you have been on an interview for a job? It is nerve wracking. Well, that's part of your job. It is. Is interviewing people. And some people have maybe failed at that interview. My question about interviews, when they are coming to you to interview, what are you looking for in that interview? Um, so that gets a little tricky. If you, if you get the interview, it's because you've already done a few things right. You have the knowledge, the skills, the qualifications. Um, so knowledge, skills, and abilities, the KSAs. You can put that on paper all day long. But when, and, it, and when you come to an interview, when we interview people, based on lots of reasons, um, the nature of the job, the nature of the law. Um, we disqualify people. So you never no. want to come to an interview to get disqualified. So to prevent that, you should present your very best. You only get one first impression, and I think that as our society continues to change, it's easy to hide behind social media or it's easy to hide behind a resume or a cover letter, but when you go to an interview, it has to be you. You, you can't fake that. Um, you can't fake the connection, you can't fake eye contact, you can't fake interest. And so I think it's really important when you show up for an interview, and when you, if you interview with me, I'm gonna look to you to have passion beyond the warm body. I don't wanna hire just like refrigerators you know they're running they're there I want to hire people to do a job that means something to them and, and and it's okay for that job to mean your paycheck because that paycheck may provide your livelihood to support your family which may be your passion it's okay to have motives for the job but you have to you have to want it and work today and work 50 years from now is still is still work so when you go for an interview you have to have a mentality knowing that the job's not always going to be easy um, it's going to require work, and you should put energy and effort into that interview. Thanks. Let's end with a little lightning round. What I'm going to do, she has not seen these questions. So the first part is word association. Okay. I'm going to give you a word. Tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Here we go. Okay. You like Thor up there? That's right. Oh, okay. Here we go. University of Alabama. Oh, roll, Todd, roll. Um, so uh, I have family in Alabama. Uh, when we cross the state line, my son literally starts singing Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> um, we held Alabama season tickets for a couple years. So I think football, yeah. winning, yeah. lots of winning, 17 national Something UT fans don't know anything about. Um, hey, UT, UT fans, wait, wait, wait. Uh -huh. So I'm from here. I have two brothers and a dad. Who are huge UT fans? They they could persevere. I mean, who yes. shows up to lose every week? That's right. I mean, failing forward. Failing forward, UT fans. Forward. You got it. Oh, I'm offending some people out there. Oh, uh, it's okay. It's they okay. still show up on the field. Next one. 2004 movies. What movies were out in 2004? I was busy. Think. On up. Think high school. Think whatever high school movie you can think of. Um, so the Harry Potter movies had just come out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what other movies were out in 2004. I'll go Shrek? Was Shrek, Shrek out? Yeah. Shrek? Shrek 2? Shrek, Let's go Shrek and 2004 music. First thing that pops in your head. High school music. Uh, I don't... Uh, let's see. High school music. Mm. Which one? I don't know. Oh, got it. I'm no good at this game. Captain D's. Hush puppies and sweet tea. Yes. Here we go. All right. Pumpkin spice. Um, it reminds me of fall and I am a fan. Nice. Let's skip to this last one. Oh, favorite restaurant in Murfreesboro. Um, Pad Thai Cafe oh. on South Church Street. Absolutely. Spicy basil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Last one. What do you know for sure? Well, 
I can say that I know for sure um, that the people in your life, the relationships that you're building today, um, impact your tomorrow. So even if you don't know it, you're impacting somebody else, else's life. And um, our time is, is precious and it's important to, to use it for, for all the things that are important. It's, 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 I know for sure that you need to find out what's important to you and make that your priority. Absolutely. Please give it up for Ms. Kara Pennington. Thank you so much Thank for you. having me today. Thank you. We'll go to third period. That was fantastic. That was so good. Now, often.